VFix tutorial, we're going to show you how to take a couple of your products like Pano 2 VR, PT GUI, and Photoshop and work together to add a custom logo or nadir file to the inside of your VPix virtual tour. The technique may seem a little busy, but if you pay attention, we'll kind of show you how this works step by step. We're going to start with PT GUI and take four images here and drag them into our PT GUI window and as you can see they loaded up just fine and we're going to select the automatic or align images button and the new window will appear and if you got any problems it'll kind of tell you but it looks like mine stitched okay so we're going to get rid of this window and we're going to just jump down to the create panel or step 3 button and we need to make sure that we do the 6000 by 3000 pixels here very important to do that quality um, you don't want to keep these things at 100% all the time. You may want to go with like 65 or 70% so that we kind of keep your files between 900K and about 1.5 megabytes as JPEGs. Last step, of course, is to click the Create Panorama button. And when that's done, the panorama will typically save right to where you got it from. So in this case, we don't change anything. And if we hit Browse Review, we can see that we are in the same folder. We can open the output folder and you can see, ta-da, there's the panorama that we just made. All right, opening this into Adobe Photoshop, as you can see, we've got a little bit of black here in the bottom. And this is where we're going to cover the custom nadir into this file. And we have to warp it and stretch it into position. So doing that manually will take quite a few hours. I don't have that much time. So uh, as I showed you previously, we could click on Nadir and we could do the silver mirror ball, but it's not that easy with a custom Nadir file like this one. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to use a program called Pano 2 VR with Adobe Photoshop to kind of make this uh, custom logo or lens cap appear as an image on the bottom of your virtual tour, like this one for example. This one was taken from Madelon Realty, a successful real estate shop who does a lot of VPix tours with us. They have three offices. And this is what they put on the bottom of their Nadir file. It's kind of cool. Buy me. We're going to do something kind of similar. So I've got a template that's here, and you can get this free off of the uh, VPix website. And uh, this has layers already in there for Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to use a little fonts and little colors and notice that my file here is about 450 pixels and 450 by 450 is a square. But if you want to make this a little bit bigger because your tripod feet may be sticking out too much, we can do that. And we're going to do that when we go to file and it's save for web. Pay attention that these little background errors have the little white and gray checkerboard squares because uh, that certainly means it's a transparent file. So I'm going to put Amazing Realty, and I'm going to probably change the font color on the second line, probably maybe to an accent of orange, so it kind of blends in with the By Me up here at the top. I think that will artistically look pretty good if this was a real estate lens cap for a company called Amazing Realty. All right, everything's done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go under File and hit Save for Web, and we're going to make this a little bit bigger right now. So when we do that, File, Save for Web. And over here in the image size, uh, 475, 480, 500, 515, you know, within reason. You want to go ahead and put in your numbers that are here. You want to call this like My Cool Nadir File. And you can put that into the same folder. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to bring basically uh, kind of like two files together here, sort of, you know, from Adobe Photoshop. But what do we have to do first is we have to do what's called the transformation. So in our Pano 2 VR file, we've got the original 6,000 by 3,000 pixel panorama already loaded up here for what's called select input. You can see it's already there. We have to convert that input to basically a cube and we're going to choose the horizontal cross 
We're not going to change the cube face size. Uh, tip is fine. Everything else here looks good. And we're just going to hit convert. What happens is it kind of takes your big, long, wide JPEG file and like the six sides of a box, it kind of unwraps it. And when it does that, ta-da, it looks like a box that's, well, been unwrapped. Now, if you'll notice here on the very, very bottom of your panel, you're going to have basically a uh, little hole there. And that's where, of course, the tripod lens cap file is certainly going to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just patch that little black uh, hole right where I'm clicking. And we're going to put the nadir file right there. So that's what the original file looks like. And we've got that cube file there. We're going to get the nadir file and open that one up. Okay. There's our cube and there's our nadir. So I'm going to put the two together here. A little copy, cut, or paste, whatever your preference is. All right, zooming in over here, we've got the tripod. You see the feet and kind of a little black hole square here. That's where my custom logo or real estate broker nadir file is going to go. Now, if you want to clone out you know, the bottom, it's grass or it's concrete, you can hold your magic rubber stamp tool and option click, but that's not what we're going to do on this one. We're going to take your custom nadir file, which is here, it's already flat, and we're going to basically just simply hit cut or copy, and I'm going to go over here and hit paste on this one, and ta -da, there's your file. Now as you can see, it's still not quite big enough, but that's not a big deal. We're going to go make this file just a little bit bigger, and we can do that by zooming in a little bit. And we're going to go under Edit, choose Transform and Scale. Hold your Shift key down, that's important, because you want to kind of keep this in perspective. And we're going to center that, we're going to make it a little bit bigger, because i got a little bit more of a tripod to kind of hide. That looks pretty good to me. When you're finished, double click anywhere on the inside. You can shrink out your view a little bit zoom out and this looks pretty good to me so we can go and hit file and hit save for web um, this will take a second or two you've got a warning message here which just ignore that and we're going to keep this as original ping file do not change these dimensions keep these the same just go ahead and hit save and uh, you may want to change this name a little bit so we want to kind of save it like cube 2 or maybe cube dash nadir, you know, something that kind of shows this is the unwrapped box with your uh, little custom logo or lens cap here on the bottom square. All right, so here's the original. We're going to hit select input, and I'm going to change that to the ping custom nadir we just modified. And when we hit OK, pay attention, wait for it. Ta-da, there you go. You can see the little white spot there. That indicates my custom nadir file has now been loaded. But it's still a square unwrapped box and you can't upload that to the vpix platform. So we have to save this as 6000. So make sure it does say 6000 here. And we're going back to an equi rectangular file, which also means JPEG spherical. Now you can save it as a TIFF file here if you have to go back to Photoshop, but if you don't, uh, just save it as a JPEG file right here, right out of Pano 2 VR. Just like we have the compression settings or quality settings in PTGUI, we also have that here. So you can go in and make a couple of modifications. And because I'm kind of used to working with 65, 70, this will help keep your finished JPEG panorama at the right size, which is still that target range between 900K and 1.5 megabyte. Okay, so there's basically your workflow for Pano 2 VR, the Nadir lens cap, uh, PTGUI, and in our next little video, please watch that, we're going to take this uh, custom. Now you're ready to upload your JPEG panoramas to your BPix back office and start having some fun building interactive content.